ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಕಾಣಿಸ್ತಿದೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಹಾ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಕಾಣಿಸ್ತಿದೆ ಸರ್ ಯ ಪಿಪಿಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಫೈನ್ ಹಾ ಫೈನ್ ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಶೇರಿಂಗ್ ಎನಿ ವಿಡಿಯೋಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಸರ್ ಹಾ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಇತ್ರೆ ಒಂದು ಪ್ಲೇ ಮಾಡಿ ಚೆಕ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಪ್ಲೇ ಆಗುತ್ತಾ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದೆಯಾ ಹಾ ನಾನು ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ನಾನು ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ and the subhaj i i rejected but still skip on coming <laughs> no that's okay video kaanthidya uh, uh, kaanthe re sir sound audio sound is play maadi sir break aagta ide ha audio no it is Dreaming like that illa illa adu hearing loss stimulation ma'am so stimulation ek bandala ha idu okay kelsa ide sir sir so we'll wait for one 5 minutes sir uh-huh.
Eva, I can't hear you. On the occasion of International Noise Awareness Day, we had hosted a video making competition. The videos from which will be played now. I kindly request Shri Kanthar. Yeah, just one minute. You can see the video, right? Yes, sir. Okay, let's play it.
uh, our sincere apologies. We are having some technical issues, so we're not able to play the videos. But the link for the same will be put on the in the chat box. Okay, so we will now begin with today's program. International Noise Awareness Day is a global campaign commemorated on the last Wednesday of April of each year. It was founded in 1996 by the Center for Hearing and Communication, aiming to raise awareness of the effects of noise on the welfare and health of people. Noise affects people in many ways, but only deafness and annoyance receive actual interest from the general public. Worldwide, people are called upon to take part in various actions on this occasion. The Department of Audiology and Speech-Language Pathology has organized a guest lecture to reflect upon today's theme. Now I kindly request Ms. Shweta Prabhu, head of the Department of Audiology and Speech-Language Pathology, Yenapoya Medical College, to deliver the welcome address. Good evening to one and all. This year's, uh, as uh, Eva told the date and the importance of the event, the year uh, theme being protect your hearing, protect your health. So through this uh, talk, we are trying to help raise awareness on the harmful effects of noise on hearing, health and quality of life, and through which we can inspire positive action in the community. On behalf of the organizing committee, Department of Audiology and Speech Language Pathology, it's my privilege to welcome Dr. Prashant Prabhu, the speaker of the day. Welcome you, sir. I would like to welcome all the deans, department and center heads, faculty, colleagues, students and attendees who have joined us for the webinar today. Welcome you all. Over to you, Eva. Thank you, ma'am. I take this opportunity to introduce our speaker for the evening, Dr. Prashant Prabhu. Dr. Prashant has completed his graduate and doctoral studies at Aish Mysore. His research has focused on the assessment and rehabilitation of auditory neuropathy spectrum disorders, tinnitus, auditory processing disorders, and cochlear synaptopathy, and has completed specialized courses on cognitive behavioral therapy for tinnitus. He has more than 60 published articles in peer-reviewed national and international journals. He is currently serving as an academic editor for Plus One Journal and an assistant editor in the Journal of All India Institute of Speech and Hearing. Furthermore, he has authored eight book chapters and has served as a reviewer for several reputed international journals. So without further ado, I kindly request Dr. Prashant to enlighten us on the theme of International Noise Awareness Day. Over to you, sir. Okay, so <clears throat> thank you, Eva. Thank you, uh, everyone, for having me here and uh, uh, inviting me to talk on this important uh, topic on creating awareness for improving our hearing health and specifically for uh, uh, noise uh, induced hearing loss or the effects of noise on our hearing. Okay, so. Uh, as I was told, we'll have a diverse audience, so we'll have uh, people from different backgrounds. So considering that, I have tried to uh, prepare the presentation in such a way that uh, it is simple. I mean, it can be very simple for maybe somebody who is doing uh, speech and hearing or studying medicine, but but it can be something very informative for those who are not in the field as well. And for all of us, there is something for all of us to take uh, take home and uh, learn how to um, I don't know, how to protect our ears and how to preserve our hair. Okay. So before I open my presentation and start off, uh, can I quickly have uh, messages on the chat box? from which profession you are coming from, whether it could be medicine, speech and hearing, or any allied profession that you are in. So you can just quickly type in. Am I audible to all of you? I mean, you can just, okay, so speech and hearing. So like that, I just wanted a few insights just to know that, uh, okay, BASLP, speech and hearing, okay. 
VSLP, VSLP, okay. Radiology, speech and hearing, okay. Okay, so the majority of the audience is BASLP, okay. Cool. Okay. Good, thank you. Thank you for your replies. But okay, so but we may have more people from the allied profession also joining in. So I'll try to balance both and uh, try to give more input so that you also have uh, better learning. Okay, so quickly I'll just share my screen. Okay, hopefully my screen is visible to all of you and I'm audible. Okay, so considering that we'll uh, focus on product your hearing and product your health. And uh, I'll just, sorry for that, I'll just quickly stop my video so that you have better bandwidth. So when the topic was given to me, the uh, plan that I had. So let me talk about both hearing health in and also specifically to noise related uh, stuff as well. So all of you must be wondering that you will say that you should not listen to music, you should not use your uh, earphones, you should not uh, go to parties, etc. So that's what you're expecting me to uh, say, but I'll say maybe a part of it, but I'll also say uh, what you can do, I mean, how you can do all of that also. So considering that, we'll just quickly, you know, start off with uh, music. Okay, so let me quickly play a audio to you and uh, you need to guess the song. So looking at the uh, initial background music, you can, you need to guess the song that I'm just playing. So just let me play this and you can just guess the song. So you can just comment your answers in the chat box. Yes, so we have answers from Meenakshi, Anushri, yes, they say it is Sri Valli, yes, so that's a song of uh, uh, Sri Valli, good. So now moving on to the agenda for today, what we will be talking, okay, so all of you heard the song and you guessed that it is a song uh, uh, from the movie Pushpa and it is a Sri Valli song, so the things that we will be talking about is I'll be talking to you in brief to tell you how you heard the sound. Okay, so when, how did you hear the mu music basically? I mean, how did you understand that this is, uh, uh, this is the particular song? So how our ears hear it? So that's what we'll be starting off with. And there are things, if you do, you won't be able to hear properly or you wouldn't have been able to, uh, you know, guess what the song was. And we'll be discussing on what is that. So if I have played the same song at a very high level and you were using your headphones and you were listening to it for a long time, what could happen to your auditory system? We'll be discussing about that. And I want you to listen to that Sri Valli song, but I don't want your ears to get damaged. How can I do that? So that's the ending part that we'll be uh, talking about. So that's the uh, agenda for it. So I've kept it as simple as possible so that it is uh, understandable for the general public as well. Okay, so... So this one study which I showed all my students as well. So the average attention span for any student or any talk is 20 minutes and uh, uh, it is shorter than that of a goldfish. So I have been asked to talk for 45 minutes and you'll have 15 minute discussion. And I know that after I, you won't have that attention span for the entire 45 minutes. So the things that I have planned is we'll have 15 to 20 minutes of the talk initially. So then there will be a quick break listening break i'll talk about more of that as well so we'll have a break 
where initial part which focus on the basics of the auditory system and how we can prevent how we can protect our ears and the second half would have uh, specific to the topic for the day uh, that is specifically to noise awareness and hearing health so that's the whole agenda or the plan that we have for today and i know that attention span lasts very very short because all of us are used to watching reels watching whatsapp statuses which goes like changes every every 5 seconds every 10 seconds so considering that my entire uh, you know lecture will have only pictures and videos mostly and you won't have you will have very less text so that i catch your attention at least for the 20 minutes and all of you pay attention to what i'm speaking okay so the first part for the first uh, part of the talk is my name is kan kan with respect to ear or kiwi in kannada or chavi in malayalam so we'll be discussing about the story of kan or the ear so what exactly it is so kan or ear as you know is one of the five senses which is important for us to hear the sound and uh, if i ask you why do we need ears we need ears for hearing so that everybody knows but hearing is something which is important for even from a child to an adult so you start hearing even when you are in the womb when the when the baby is 5 month old in the womb the child starts to even hear and then it is important for us to learn to speak and for us to have a good quality of life hearing is extremely important another important function of ear which most of us don't know of or most of us don't think that ears can do is balance so balance is another important aspect uh, which which function of the ear rather so if i want to stand straight if i'm sitting straight i'm not you know um, falling to one side etc so then my balance is working properly that is my ears are working fine if i have any problem in my ear i'll have balance problem also if a person is experiencing giddiness vertigo etc then uh, he may have a problem in the balance system as well because of a damage to the ear so there are two major functions of the ear one is hearing other one is balance so how do we hear so quickly going on to how do we actually hear so there is something called as pinna pinna is uh, the structure that you all of us see uh, you know outside where you wear uh, i mean earrings and stuff etc so like so the sound gets collected in the pinna and it goes through a narrow canal called as the ear canal from there the sound reaches the eardrum so eardrum is the place where it vibrates uh, vibrates due to the sound and reaches to the three bones that are there in the middle ear so these three bones that are there in the middle portion of the ear so these are the smallest bones in our body and this is the most smallest bone so they they start to vibrate after that they go to a structure in the inner ear called as the cochlea so where you have tiny hair cells that are present and uh, that start to to vibrate and they start to vibrate and because of that we start to uh, hear the sound through the auditory nerve the sound passes through the auditory nerve okay and this is how if you heard the sri valli songs how did you hear it the sound went through your uh, external ear passed through the ear canal vibrated the eardrum you know and vibrated the tiny bones in the middle ear went to the cochlea i mean there was movement of the hair cells and through the auditory nerve it reached your brain so that's how we then we hear so that's how we hear the sound so that is a mechanism so if there is any problem in any one of the pathways that can lead to hearing loss so we'll be discussing what can cause damage to the outer and the middle ear and maybe if there is an exposure to noise what is the portion that gets damaged okay so moving on to the next segment of our talk we talked about my name is kan so the next part is nodi swami na virode hege so this is the next uh, segment that we'll be talking about all of us know that this is wrong but we are hell bent to do the things like we want to so we know that it is not not good but still we continue doing that so there are stuff that we regularly do even when we know that it is not appropriate so we'll quickly discuss on that so having such habits which can damage my ears so one of the first thing is ear wax so why do we have ear wax ear wax is something which is a protective uh, structure it prevents entry any foreign body entry it prevents dust from entering in so wax is actually good so it's nothing like we should remove the wax as uh, i mean as soon as it gets collected because wax is 
given by God to protect your ears. But there are some people in whom wax get accumulated and completely blocked. So once it gets blocked, then the sound cannot pass through properly. Okay, but naturally the wax comes out of your ears. So every uh, every day, whenever you chew, whenever you are sleeping, the wax gradually moves out, moves out of your ear. But how, but we try to remove the ear wax. So what do we do? We use earbuds and we clean the ear. So we any medical shop we have earbuds. Any any store you, you go, you have earbuds that are there, and you pick pick it up and you clean your ears regularly. So, but as an audiologist, what I advise is we should not be using earbuds earbuds because using the earbuds causes more damage. It can cause more damage than removing the wax because whenever you're pushing the uh, wax through the uh, ear buds, what can happen is it can go and it can rupture your uh, eardrum as well. So instead of removing it, you can push the wax inside. So what should we do? Should we not clean a wax at all? So whenever you feel that your wax is getting accumulated, go to an ENT surgeon, get a wax removal done. So that's an easy procedure. So they'll do, uh, do it instantly some, or, or you need to just uh, uh, put some drops and make it wet and you can remove the ear wax. Uh, but what is advised is maybe you can use the earbuds only to the uh, periphery of your canal, only at the outside level. You can just use it such that there are any wax just come out already. You can remove it off or there is any water that it can come out. But don't push the earbuds inside and then try to clean it because that causes more damage than uh, uh, protecting your ears. And this is another common practice that all of us have. Uh, it's like whenever you have a pen or uh, whenever you have something which you feel like pricking your ears, so you just take it and do it. So that again causes more damage than protecting your ears. So don't do that. So all this can rupture the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. So that can lead to hearing loss and other complications. Now the common problem is swimmers here. So whenever, uh, you know, uh, all of us favorite destination is going to beaches. So beaches are good. So go to beach, enjoy the beach, etc. But make sure that whenever you go for swimming, you swim in a place where it is water is clean where it is not dirty but whenever you're going for swimming if water gets entered so if it is something which is uh, which is not clean etc that so can cause some uh, you know fungal infections etc we call it a swimmer's ear so to avoid that we need to use something called a swimmer's ear plug so you can get a swimmer's ear plug done use that and then go for swimming that avoids uh, you getting hearing loss and putting oil into the ears so putting garlic in the ears all those are uh, practices that we have uh, but we should be avoiding all that because that can cause more damage than uh, helping us okay so that is something which we need to avoid okay so these are the stuff we know but sometimes we don't follow so this is uh, the second segment that i wanted to tell you such that you know uh, we learn and we don't repeat the same again so that we can protect our ears better so we go to the next segment so that is called as ya kinge so why so why do we get hearing loss i mean why uh, what are the reasons by which we can get a hearing loss and some of the reasons can it be prevented so which are those reasons and how can you prevent the uh, hearing loss so that is that comes in the next segment of uh, next segment so one of the common complaint of one of the common things that we experience is uh, the blockage of a station tube there is a small tube that connects your nose excuse me, from your nose to the ear. So there is a tube, we call it as auditory tube or station tube, which connects from my nose to the ears. So whenever I have a nose blockage, what happens is air from the outside doesn't go to the middle ear. It doesn't go to the middle ear. So what happens is there would be fluid that gets accumulated inside the middle ear and that comes out as an ear discharge. We, we say that well, there is water coming from the ears, you know, there is some pus like discharge that is coming. So all of the reason is an infection in the middle ear and that can happen when the station tube gets blocked or there is a bacterial infection that affects your middle ear. So that's a common thing. Okay, so how to avoid? avoid as soon as you get old, try to get treated as early as possible because if that gets, doesn't get treated, that can cause negative pressure and can lead to uh, middle ear pathologies. And other than that, another common uh, reason is getting a middle ear infection in babies. Okay, so we get middle ear infection in babies because the station tube in babies is horizontal. That is, it is very straight. So because of that, whenever the mother is feeding, so there are chances that the, uh, you know, the 
milk can regurgitate into the middle ear and cause infection so that's why what is advised is whenever the mother is feeding the baby the baby should be kept at an angle of 45 degree so i repeat you keep it at an angle of 45 degrees such that the uh, eustachian tube is not directly connecting your uh, Uh, yes such that there is less in chances of entry okay so that is a common thing so common practice is to keep the baby horizontal and feed it so that causes more chances of infection uh, rather than uh, helping the baby and always after feeding the baby we should burp such that uh, there is lesser chance of regurgitation and preventing a middle ear infection this is another thing that all of us need to keep in mind what are the other reasons whenever we think that a baby is getting born so that's a uh, that's a happy news on a happy feeling but if you don't take care of when the when the uh, when the baby is in the womb or during the birth that that these are the common causes of uh, uh, hearing loss so we call it as before birth during birth and after birth so reasons delayed pregnancy so auto toxic drugs i mean there are medicines that are taken without consultation of doctor you just take some antibiotics etc which are not prescribed by the doctors all those can damage the uh, ears of the baby like getting a bacteria or a viral infection when the baby is in the womb smoking and alcohol so these are some of the reasons which can uh, easily cause uh, hearing loss and that is something which can be avoided so these are the things which can avoid uh, making uh, you know hearing loss less probable natal causes during birth a baby has to cry as soon as the child is born because if there is a delayed birth cry oxygen doesn't get passed and that causes hearing loss premature delivery the baby has to be born by 9 months but if the baby does uh, there's a delay in the delivery so that again leads to hearing loss low birth weight the baby should be at least 2.5 kilos but if the baby is uh, born with maybe less than 2000 kilos etc then that's again a risk neonatal jaundice so that's again another common reason for getting a hearing loss after birth if there are seizures you know ear infections deformities all of that can also lead to hearing loss okay so other causes would be marriage and blood relation and hereditary so i mean there could be uh, one of the common thing as that happens in india is marriage and blood relation so that is something which is easily preventable cause that can avoid uh, hearing loss to be uh, I mean to uh, avoid getting babies with hearing another thing that i just wanted to quickly highlight so i'm just giving you a brief overview if you want if you have more questions or specific things to know we can always uh, do that during the discussion another complaint is something called as auditory processing disorder where there's a child and the child is not doing so well in the class and you uh, you uh, you label the child that the child is someone who doesn't uh, Uh, learn i mean he is very lazy he is lethargic he is not interested in studying so you punish the child and all that but the child may be suffering from something called as an auditory processing disorder that is the child is hearing the sounds but the child is not able to understand what the child is hearing so the child may the whatever the class teacher is speaking the child may be just hearing but not understanding what the child what the teacher is speaking so especially in a noisy environment and all that so such a condition is called as auditory processing disorder this is one of the reason for getting a child with dyslexia so dyslexia difficulty learning all these famous people are dyslexics that's a th thing which is common among all of them all of them are dyslexic so but all of them have you know uh, Are are so famous because even they didn't have an ability to read and learn. So the focus was on their, uh, you know, actual abilities which uh, made them improve. So rather than scolding and blaming, we need to identify and teach them and assist them. So whenever we have children who are not doing so well academically, we should always screen and check, get take the child to an audiologist and check whether the child may be having an auditory processing problem. Maybe because of that, the child is not able to listen. So uh, that's another thing which we can easily check and do, and which can help many children. Uh, was suffering from auditory processing disorder this is something very underdiagnosed in a country like india so this is something which all of us should create awareness about okay so so this i think i have spoken for around 15 to 20 minutes now and we have we'll have a cctr strategic time out like as we have in ipl i think the match would have started by now it is 7:30 so i think we should match should have started by now the ipl so what i use this break is for you can use this as a take it as a listening break because i am continuously speaking maybe some of you are using earphones you take a break because that helps you to you know get a relief uh, uh, from uh, 
whatever uh, you are listening to so you get a break and so that your ears are rested and ready to listen again and use it as i use it also as a social media break so take out your phones use your uh, check your facebook and instagram stories you know check your whatsapp statuses and uh, uh, just uh, get it away with so that okay somebody has messaged and all that so get all the uh, over and then we'll come back to the second session which is more important where i'll be focusing specifically on uh, the theme for today that is on the noise awareness day okay so i'll also take a voice break so be we have a two to th th that i mean we have around 5 minutes of break now so in that those who are those who are free those who are uh, not using the social media as of now so who are ready to uh, do so what what i can do is you can go to something called as menti.com okay so we'll have a quick quiz to know how well uh, you have understood the first part that's a just a feedback for me so that i need to modify or something okay this is just a fun quiz where i think some of you might have used uh, done it or some of you could be new for it so just click www.menti.com it will ask for a nickname so just give your actual name and uh, then wait for a code so i'll just share the code you need to enter the code and you can enter into the quiz so we'll just quickly play that there are just three questions uh, so let's play that and see who uh, wins the menti quiz and whether from which college so they would be winning so let's see uh, how much i've understood and just to refresh your mind so that you are ready to listen on uh, noise induced hearing loss okay so i'll just quickly end the presentation screen and i'll go to the menti meter screen so go to www.menti.com and uh, enter the code that is 5880-5692 so this is what you need to enter and uh, 5880-5692 and then you will join in so this is a very simple you'll have a question you will have four options you need to click the correct answer so that's how it works and you will have a leaderboard that comes up after this so that is uh, you'll have the top 10 people who have who have, who have uh, answered correctly so their names comes up there are two things that will happen first thing is person who gives accuracy accurately so that is first criteria second one is speed those who do it faster so they will they'll be able to you know answer better so maybe that's a slight delay in youtube so but uh, uh, maybe those who are logged in through google meet i think they all of them can join it's just a fun quiz so just to know uh, how much you have understood and stuff so you can just uh, enjoy you can give your nicknames also you can keep yourself anonymous even i'm okay for it just to know how much i've understood okay so we have 11 players waiting for more so sir, can, you have... you, can you wait yeah. for two minutes sir? i have asked for one two minutes in the chat box yeah yeah sure sure, sure. so meanwhile you keep joining in and then we'll Uh, sir, can you please repeat the code? The code is 5880 5680-5692. Thank you, sir. Okay, so as I said, there are three questions. First one, just to, for those who do, are not used to menti.com, that's the question for, it's a general knowledge question, simple general knowledge question. So let's see how you answer. And after that, there are two questions that will follow specific to the topics that we just discussed. Okay, so let's see how it goes. Maybe I'll wait for another minute and then I'll start. We have 68 people in Google Meet, so maybe once we have around 30, 35, I think we'll start. Okay. 
Okay, so once I reach 25, I think I should be able to start. People logging in, logging off. There could be network issues. Yeah. Okay, so we have 26. Okay, then I'll just quickly start. Okay, I'll wait for three more people. Okay, then. Okay, so we have 28, so I'll start. We'll have the first question, and all of you keep ready with your laptops or your phones to answer accurately and also answer quickly, as quickly as possible. Okay, so we have 29 players playing for the cup, so let's see who wins the cup. So answer fast and get more points. Which is the capital of Karnataka? So this is an easy general knowledge question, so let's see. How many of you answer it correctly? Yes, so we have 30 responses. Yes, 22 have got it right. It is definitely not Mysore. So Mysore is not the capital of Karnataka. Mangalore also is not the capital of Karnataka. So that it is uh, Bengaluru. Okay, so let's see the leaderboard. Okay, nice. So we have uh, the leaderboard and the leader is Chinnu. So Chinnu is leading. After that, we have Shaz, Fatima, Samiha, Mars, Maya, Anushri, Justina, Catherine, Joel, and Mohammed Farzeen. So let's go to the next one. This is based on what we discussed today. But again, a very simple one. Which of the following is a function of years? So if you are attentive in the initial part of the talk, I think you should be able to answer this very easily. Yes, so balance is the correct answer, definitely not vision. Yeah, so balance is the correct answer. So let's see if the if Chinu continues to lead or if somebody takes over. Okay, so Joel Jain was fastest, but, chill, but still Chinnu is leading, followed by Fatima, Samiha, and Shaz. Okay, so we'll go to the last one and let's see who wins uh, today's quiz. All the best. While feeding the baby, baby should be kept at which angle? So let's see how many of you answer it correctly. So in the YouTube explains, uh, like the YouTube explains. Yeah, so YouTube there is a delay. Yeah, so that, uh, feedback is there. So. Okay, okay. I yeah, I have muted that. Okay. Okay, now it's fine. Okay. So we have 25 people who have answered correctly. So let's see who wins the quiz for today. Okay, so Anushri was the fastest, but yes, so Chinnu wins the quiz. So can you just uh, type who is Chinnu, what's your name and from which college? So we have other, other top 10 of Fatima Samiha. We have Shaz, Anushri, Joel Jain, Maya, Catherine, Divya, Mohammed Farzeen, and Mohammed Asif. So well done. Uh, and, uh, congratulations and well done. I'm happy that all of you are attentive and you are uh, listening to what we discussed today. Okay, so I'll just quickly go back. I think we had a good break and we'll, we're all set now to listen to the specific effects of uh, noise on our um, auditory system. So we had the Menti quiz and uh, Chinnu has won the quiz, but those who couldn't win the quiz also, there is always uh, next time. So we keep trying. So next so keep that in mind and uh, uh, 
uh, keep working hard okay so with that note we'll move on to the next segment or the next half which is more important and specific to what what theme of today so noise se bachna mushkil hi nahi namunkin hai yes that is that is the reality as of now so uh, we are exposed to so much of noise around us so we are forced to i mean even knowingly or unknowingly even if we don't want we are exposed to high level of noise so what are the what should we do and what are its harmful effect is what we need to learn so it's very important to prevent noise induced hearing loss one of the common uh, people who get affected are maybe those who work in factories and you know the weavers and those who are constantly exposed to loud noise but nowadays we have noises from everywhere that is the household sources where you use maybe a vacuum cleaner you know maybe a lawn mower or even when you are using your you know a uh, hair dryer even those are high level of noises which can uh, which, which are silently damaging our ears going to social events so that is a, another common uh, because the frequency of going to such events has increased a lot so that is one of the common reasons for getting more uh, hearing damage commercial and industrial activities more of act, more of construction activities that are happening everywhere and transportation traffic is one of the major uh, reason for uh, getting a noise induced hearing loss so how loud are these sounds how loud is this so that is what we need to understand and what are the safe levels so which means uh, around 85 to 90 decibel if you are able to hear for 8 hours that is safer but if you are hearing for it uh, for more than 8 hours and that is more damaging a 95 db for 4 hours 100 db for 2 hours even if you hear for 1 hour 105 decibel it will permanently damage your ears i'm stressing on the word permanently because it will damage your ears such that you won't get your hearing back no, no medicines no surgery nothing can help you to get your ears back once it's gone it's gone forever okay so 15 minutes of 115 db is enough to uh, damage your ears so what is this 115 db or 110 db just to give you a reference uh rain drops are 40 decibel normal conversation is 60 busy city traffic is 85 hay dryers around 90 rock concerts 105 and i pod at peak volume can even touch 115 decibel so jack hammer hammer can shot five also this is how the intensity of the uh, these sounds are and you need to be getting exposed as less as possible so that you can prevent your ears much better so exposure to noise doesn't only lead to hearing loss that is extremely important for us to know it causes a lot of other effects as well so what are the other effects it, it, it acute effects could be it causes sleep problems it increases annoyance stress and distraction you cannot pay attention to what you are doing because of excessive noise exposure and initially it could be temporary change in hearing but later it can easily cause lead to hypertension because the blood vessels are constantly getting constricted in, increase uh, that leading to an increased uh, blood pressure reduce learning and productivity so you become less productive endocrine disruption you get hormonal disorders and all of them can easily lead to a heart disease which is permanent or you can get a permanent hearing loss and tinnitus that is a ringing sensation in your ears so that is these are the ill effects of the noise that all of us need to be aware of so how to avoid so especially those who are exposed to high level of noise you should wear an ear plug or an ear muff so we have uh yeah more for even headphones we have lots of noise cancellation headphones now so if you are forced to uh, you know getting exposed to noise go with ear plugs or go with you know uh, uh noise cancellation headphones that can prevent the high noise exposure and help you prevent uh, hearing and uh, so one of the major noise is the industrial noise traffic noise etc where you are forced to listen to sometimes so in such a case you are you you have to use this otherwise you are uh, damaging your ears permanently okay this is the first part that i just wanted to talk to you about and another important aspect that we need to uh, discuss in today's uh, era this is this so coming to the dialogue from kgf music 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 i don't like i avoid but music likes me i can't avoid yes so that is what is happening even if you don't want to listen to music sometimes you are forced to listen to music or you even like music and that is the gen factor now you have to wear earphones or you have to listen to music so that is very common when you are traveling you put your uh, uh, plugs on and listen for 4 hours 5 hours you know and you uh, whenever in, i have my students who come from like hostel to the class so they have their earphones always on so that 
makes them happy, relieves their stress and all that. But ultimately, uh, you are damaging your ears uh, without knowing. You are completely uh, uh, getting uh, hearing loss even without your knowledge because. This is a picture that I show all of them here today and gone tomorrow. So now you are wearing an uh, earphone to enjoy. But if you don't turn on the music now, then you'll be forced to wear a hearing aid because hearing aid is the only option that is available if you want to hear, especially when you have a uh, when you get a hearing loss. So turn down your music before you can't hear it anymore. So you won't be able to hear at all if you don't turn your music down. So most of the apps have this most of the android phones nowadays come up with this warning so listening to sounds above the current volume may permanently damage your hearing so always try to keep the volume below that i know listening to loud music gives you more pleasure gives you more uh, you know more kick if i can use that word but ultimately your ears are also important so i'm not saying that you should not listen to music listen to music at a safer level at a lower volume as much as possible but if you want to listen for music at a higher volume give listening breaks or listen for some time give ears a break for it to recoup and then use it okay so that's what is extremely important for me to know that i'm hearing a music at a very loud volume if you have plugged in earplugs into your ears i mean earphones into your ears and somebody your friend sitting next to you is also able to uh, tell which song you are hearing then definitely that is loud because your uh, the sound is leaking so much, which means that the sound is extremely loud and it is damaging your ears. So if your friend can tell which song you are here listening to, then definitely that is damaging your ears so much. Okay. And how does it damage? It damages the tiny hair cells that are there in your cochlea, as I said. So this is something which causes a permanent damage. Once this is lost, nothing can regenerate it and it's a permanent hearing loss that you have. Okay. And some of you might be listening to music and uh, you, would, you would have done a hearing testing done or an audiometry testing done or you might have absolutely normal hearing so you may feel that okay i'm listening to music but i'm not my hearing is not getting affected so let me listen to continuous listening to it but that is not the case because there's a concept called as hidden hearing loss so hearing loss which is hidden which is not shown in your auditory test it's not shown in your hearing test so you need to do some special tests to identify whether you have any hidden hearing loss and one of the reason for getting hidden hearing loss is high noise exposure or high music exposure exposure to very high level of music especially musicians and those who are uh, factory workers also are exposed to high level of noise they may not show a loss in the audiogram or a hearing test result but they may have something which is very hidden so if you are experiencing something like this where you are not able to hear people incorrectly even if you have normal hearing and in, uh, you prefer quiet rather than a noisy situation feeling easily distracted not able to focus in noisy settings you should be suspecting of an early stage of hidden hearing loss that could be because of excessive noise exposure and there are ways in which you need to uh, you know avoid it such that the loss doesn't come to the audible frequency as well and there are ways in which you can improve your communication in presence of noise as well so this is another uh, consequence of high noise exposure or high music exposure so this is what i just wanted to tell listening to music is good i'm not saying you should not listen to music listen to music but at a lower level and try to give as much as listening breaks as possible so that you, you don't turn out to wear some huge device like this and lose your hearing okay so moving on to the next part so the famous dialogue from pushpa Pushpa means flower kadu fire. So it is like not a flower, it is fire. So why I use this is because the next segment is on using fire, I mean firecracker. So firecrackers are another way in which, you know, it can cause more hearing damage as well. So not saying that we should not, uh, you know, uh, burn firecrackers. Firecrackers are fun. They have to, you can use it if you want to use it. And if you don't want, you cannot avoid it. But make sure that you use green firecrackers which produce lesser sound because there are, you know, a 60 dB sound will be produced by maybe a gold rush or atom bomb produces around 84 dB. And these are permissible because uh, only if the sound causes more than 125, such uh, firecrackers are not sold at all. But what we generally do, we come, we join both atom bombs and together and we try to burn so that we get more sound and we keep the bomb inside a, inside a tumbler or inside a 
uh, inside a tin and then blast it so that we get more sound. So all these things are something which can be easily avoided because this can lead to permanent uh, hearing loss and which cannot be recovered at all. So that's extremely important. Not uh, you know firing firecrackers after 10 p.m. All these are regulations that need to be uh, followed because that can lead to hearing impairment, tinnitus that is ringing in the ear, high blood pressure, lack of sleep, stress, lack of concentration, low productivity. So the, all those are uh, the ill effects of uh, uh, high noise exposure. So, again, a social norm nowadays, so all of you, I think majority of you go to pubs, you drink, and uh, uh, so that's absolutely fine. So, drinking and drink at a moderate level because alcohol also can lead to lots of ill effects on your health. And going to a pub is fine, but whenever you're going to a pub and where there is excessive noise around, you should be very careful and take appropriate listening breaks and going to a concert is fun. So go to a concert, enjoy the concert. I'm not saying that you should not go for go, go to it, but you should take appropriate precautions. So once if you don't take appropriate precautions, then you're damaging your ears. Whenever you go to a concert, most probably what happens is um, when you come back, you will have blocking sensation and will have like kind of a sound tinnitus, which we call it always. So that is a very common, you know, uh, side effect of going to uh, places where you're exposed to loud, loud sound. I had a patient very recently went to Goa for a, for a trip. He were, there was loud noise party going on and after that he had continuous tinnitus and it was not going at all. So tinnitus is something which is very common. So do you, uh, after going to a concert. Okay, so what needs to be done whenever you have a tinnitus? Most often you get tinnitus because you are you have a temporary hearing loss due to the loud noise exposure. The ears are completely tired. They're not able to fire properly. So because of that, the brain produces extra sounds which are heard as uh, heard as tinnitus. So the things that you need to do is avoid uh, going to a noisy environment after going to a concert. You need to really take a listening break. You have gone to a concert and your ears are ringing continuously. So don't. Uh, listen to uh, your music players, etc., for almost two to three days. Give a complete listening break. Try to be in as quiet environment as possible because brain, uh, your auditory system tries to get uh, relaxed and you will get a relief from tinnitus. Most often, within 48 hours, the tinnitus should completely stop. But some of them, it may take almost a week for the hearing to recover and the tinnitus to go off. But even without this, if a person has tinnitus, so you should not get stressed. You should not worry about it. There are treatments available. There is a common misconception that you have to live with tinnitus all your life. Tinnitus will make you suffer for an entire lifetime, but that is not the case. Tinnitus can also be managed. You can also get a relief from tinnitus. You need to consult an appropriate trained audiologist who can help you in uh, managing tinnitus. So tinnitus can also be managed. So that's another takeaway thing that I just wanted to quickly tell all of you. Stay healthy, stay fit. So that's an extremely important point. So being healthy, being fit, so that increases the blood flow and all that. So that helps you to, you know, get recovered faster. And that helps you from preventing uh, and getting a noise induced uh, hearing loss faster. So quickly at the end, so this is something, uh, noise is help affecting children a lot. So this is something which is very, uh, dis uh, I mean, disheartening to say because most of the children nowadays are using earphones and most of them have headphones to, and even we have with the online classes, they were forced to listen to all this. So all of that is causing a lot of problem in children. So children get cognitive delays, children get speech delays, they get poor memory, lack of attention, lack of motivation, stress, anxiety. All these are seen even in children, so especially when you have small kids at home, try not, uh, you know, taking them to places where there is excessive noisy environment and don't play excessive music even at home because all these can have adverse effect on your side overall development. So I've been talking about lots of ill effect, what we, what happens, how it damages, etc. Lots of negatives. So let's talk about or end on a positive note and say, what should I do for preventing my ears or, you know, preventing my ears to getting damaged? Yes, we have to go to a, a noisy situation, but how can I prevent from not getting my ears damaged? So these are the three major things that uh, that is recommended is walk away. So walk away from the sound source as much as possible. Imagine you are in a party where you are, you are, don't 
stand in a place close to the uh, speaker try to be as away as possible because as distance increases the loudness sound reduces and that protects your ears and turn it down whenever you are listening to music it could be personal music system or through speakers try to listen it at a lower volume so that's how you are going to pre, uh, protect and if you are forced to go out in an environment always use ear protection you have to use earplugs or you have to use uh, uh, noise cancellation headphones as that you are protecting your ears take a listening break so that is extremely important no harm in listening to music no harm in going to uh, pubs no harm in going to concerts but you have to take appropriate listening breaks okay so if you are in a concert so go away i mean if you are listening for 15 minutes you have to take a break and uh, give your ear some time to recoup only then you need to go back otherwise you are unnecessarily damaging your ear so turn down the volume and use the uh, appropriate ear protection devices so this is an acronym that i found it's which i thought i'll share it with you music so mp3 player can be too loud for your ear so turn it down so that's what m means use chill out zone, zones in clubs and take regular breaks from the loudest area so try avoiding that whenever you are at clubs stand back from speakers your ears will thank you so that will definitely help invest in some noise cancellation headphones because that is an investment to save your ears carry earplugs wherever possible so that they won't block music out but they make it Uh, you know safer so you, you still hear the music it's nothing like you stop hearing the music if you are wearing a plug but it won't be too loud and it will definitely protect your ears you can just remember the acronym and uh, use it uh, uh, you know diligently and uh, protect your ears and finally this is a message from the american speech language and hearing association how what are the eight tips for noisy environment wear hearing protection such as earmuffs or earplugs move away from noise sources such as speakers just to summarize what we have discussed in the past 20 minutes research the noise level ahead in an online review search see how much is the noise should i go with an ear protection and all that and visit noise establishment at off peak times if possible download a smartphone app there are many apps that are available which monitors the sound level so we when you know that it is crossing 85 then i should protect my ear so that is something it should automatically come to you and uh, to prevent noise exposure take periodic listening breaks is extremely important ask managers to reduce the noise in a too loud restaurant or a health club etc leave immediately if you pe feel pain or ringing in your ear so pain and ringing leave immediately because if you leave it then it becomes more chronic and you will have uh, you know you know will have more time for recovery to happen okay so so if you are not able to take care of your ears and if you continue uh, listening to loud noise and continue getting exposed to loud music what can happen i'll just show it to you with a hearing loss simulator so this is a video that i'll just going to play which will simulate and tell how a normal hearing person would be hearing but if a person gets hearing loss how much you would be hearing so you decide whether you want to be a person with normal hearing or you want to be a person with hearing loss so with that uh, i'll uh, end my talk so just quickly we'll watch the video hope it was useful and informative to all of you i know i've just covered the uh, just the basics of it so you may have lots of questions or you may have uh, things to ask specifically you can just uh, uh, interact with me and uh, discuss more on it so we'll uh, spend the remaining time that we have uh, to discuss a question that you may have so whatever best that i can i'll do it Uh, today even if you get any further doubt feel free to contact me and we can discuss more about it, more about if i am not able to answer anything uh, today so now the stage is open for discussion you can uh, ask questions through your comments or uh, put in as a youtube comment as well so depending on that uh, i'll try try my best to answer you answer all of you okay so 
open for discussion i would like to say a few words sir uh, i was really wondering how the topic and the content would go on but it was really amazing and a different uh, a uh, way you have presented i didn't really expect this and uh, the slides were amazing the way you have uh, taken through the presentation it was really good very 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 nice i think there's no one who would have realized it's one hour up <laughs> the time is just uh, fast off like that it was really nice so thank you for a wonderful talk Thank you, Shweta. Thank you for your words. Yeah. I'm glad that it was useful, and uh, I Very was able to keep yeah. okay. I was able to keep attention of all of you. Yeah. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, yes, sir. Like very simple, yet covered most of the information. Such a vast topic, you have got it together and made it uh, understandable to everyone. I I believe even the first year level also have understood some information from it. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you once again, sir. Thank you so much, Veda. Thank you. Anyone has any questions? I see you. Mala. Yeah. What type of tinnitus noise exposure can cause? Okay, so to answer that, what type of tinnitus it, uh, it depends actually. So usually, uh, uh, what happens is whenever there is a noise exposure, usually it does it affects the high frequency areas more. So the usually the high frequencies are the ones that gets affected. So why do I hear tinnitus? Is my auditory system is not perceiving the sound properly. So what does my brain do? My brain will try to produce those extra sounds since I'm not hearing. the auditory signals properly so because of that uh, high frequencies are not perceived properly so usually the uh, high frequencies tinnitus is more common in individuals with the uh, noise induced hearing loss but low frequency can also be seen but more common or more general is a high frequency uh, tinnitus because a loss would also be more at higher frequencies even if it is temporary in case of an eye i can see mala mahesh has raised the hand so if, if you have a doubt you can just ask directly as well no problem okay so oh, faiza latif her question is can you please speak uh, a little more on uh, hidden hearing loss explain a little about your hidden hearing loss yeah uh, okay. just a moment i i mala mahesh uh, top uh, topic of discussion was uh, uh, very good uh, the thing is uh, the same question uh, whether low frequency hearing loss uh, will be seen in case of uh, um, your uh, what to say noise exposure uh, that that's what i wanted to ask already you have commented on it thank you thank you thank you okay so Coming to the question by Faiza uh, about hidden hearing loss. So when we say uh, hidden hearing loss, uh, another term which we use is also called as cochlear synaptopathy. Okay, so cochlear synaptopathy or hidden hearing loss. So what we need to understand there, what happens is whenever a person is exposed to loud noise or loud music. it damages the synapse so when i say the synapse i can just quickly go to the picture if i have it uh, yeah so maybe i don't have it exactly but uh, there are hair cells which are connecting the auditory nerve okay so there is something called as a junction between your hair cells and the auditory nerve so that junction of the synapse gets damaged okay so what happens is the junction becomes not so proper so that leads to something called as hidden hearing loss so the damage is such a way that uh, we call it as auditory nerve and the synapse getting slightly damaged 
the damage is not so much to cause an actual hearing loss okay so it doesn't show anything on the audiogram audiogram shows absolutely normal but they will have problem specifically to understand speech especially in a noisy environment so those who have uh, you know uh, hidden hearing loss they may have un difficulty understanding speech because especially in a noisy environment what happens is all of your nerve fibers have to fire properly for you to understand but if i have a hidden hearing loss with some amount of damage to my auditory nerve that affects the perception especially in noise in such a case those who are doing bsnp i'll try to give more specific information you can do spin which is a speech perception in noise test those who have absolutely normal hearing to understand that and another one is doing an avr or a bera brain stem evoke auditory I mean, response auditory or auditory brain stem response where you see an abnormal first peak so an abnormal first peak and a poor spin with normal hearing mostly suggests a hidden hearing loss so that could be an early stage of getting a long standing uh, hearing loss so uh, that sh people should get uh, we should make them aware that they should stop getting exposed to loud noise etc and those who have severe problem in speech and noise understanding ability what as an audiologist why would we can recommend maybe an assistive listening device who have severe problem understanding speech and noise and that can help people with hidden hearing loss hope that information uh, clarify some aspects of it okay so so uh rumaiza has a question for you how does noise cancelling headphones help in preventing hearing loss yeah so how it helps basically is i mean if i'm using a noise cancellation headphones or if i'm using uh any ear muff kind of so these have something called as an attenuation so it prevents some amount of noise from entering for example in outside if there is a 100 decibel of noise and i'm using a ear muff or a noise cancelling head headphones which can reduce the noise by 20 decibel so though i am uh, though you know uh, though i am getting exposed to a 100 db sound with wearing a headphone or an ear muff i'm listening to only 80 db sound so because of that what happens is 80 db something which is safer as we have discussed rather than 100 db so that is enough to help a person from preventing hearing loss so a reduction or an attenuation provided by an ear muff or a noise cancellation headphones helps in preventing hearing loss um, last question sir uh, justina has a, a doubt regarding the type of tinnitus so uh, she says in objective tinnitus tinnitus is not heard by the subject it is just a perception but it is a stimulus to the clinician is that right okay so there is something called as objective tinnitus objective tinnitus is where as a clinician you are sitting in front of a patient and you are also able to hear what the sound is coming from i mean the sound can also be heard by a clinician so that is an objective tinnitus and as a medical condition you get objective tinnitus because uh, you know there is some artery problem there is some blood supply that gets affected because of that the blood is not passing properly and that sound is heard as tinnitus that is one second if you have some muscle spasm uh, you know uh, maybe at the temporomandibular joint so because of that the muscles are involuntarily moving uh that can lead to objective tinnitus so if you get a patient with objective tinnitus you need to refer them for a medical professional who can manage that and if that gets treated the, um, the perception of objective tinnitus would uh, reduce yes sir so uh two more questions and we will yeah. yes so uh shifa asks uh, for some recommendation for good uh, ear protective devices okay so uh it depends actually i mean there is nothing specifically that i would recommend i mean any good brand with uh, uh, you know uh, any good brand of headphones i mean all of you know how to select a headphone so which gives a very good clarity so such such reputed company i mean um, something like if it is sennheiser so that is a brand which gives good quality and along with that you have good headphones so that will uh, that will really help you you know uh, reduce it so no i mean it could be felix it could be sennheiser or anything uh, any good brand such thing would always have better attenuation compared to some local brand which claim for maybe a 30 db attenuation but may not be really giving it okay so that is that i just wanted um, to tell you 
And one more question from Anushri. Uh, her question is, uh, when exposed to noise, does tinnitus have to be in both ears? Yeah, so it again depends. OK, so it depends like uh, uh, where it is, uh, where you're getting exposed to. For example, if I'm standing at a place where my right ear is closer to the speaker and I'm getting more noise exposure only to my right ear, then there are chances that you hear the tinnitus only in the right ear. But if I'm exposed to sound, which is like more uh, more overall around the room so that both ears are almost getting equally affected. So then that means that you have chances of getting tinnitus in both ears. So usually most often it, it is unilateral because mostly it is somewhere closer to one side. But if it's like more general sound, so then it can be in the, the both ears as well. And uh, thank you, Hemraj. I think uh, Hemraj, uh, I, I know Hemraj from ICE, so we, uh, he was my junior and uh, thank you and hope, yes, even I hope and uh, we have more such interaction and maybe I'll get a chance to uh, meet you offline also if things uh, work, I mean, if things, everything is fine. So hope to meet you all again uh, uh, in a, in, again in maybe in an online or an offline platform for much more interactions and much more uh, uh, discussions so that uh, we, we all learn together. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Dr. Prashant, for this uh, session and for sharing a realistic approach on how we can protect our hearing. I'm sure the participants agree that the interactions and simulations are very helpful in understanding Sir's message today. I kindly request the participants to fill the feedback form link posted in the chat box. So on the occasion, a video making competition was organized on the theme, Protect Your Hearing, Protect Your Health. I kindly request Dr. Prashant to announce the results of the competition. Okay, so I'm happy to know that you had a video making competition and uh, you made an innovative attempt to create a video so and use it for creating awareness for more people. More people need an awareness on uh, uh, how to protect their ears. So that's a very good venture from all of you. So now coming to the results. Uh, so we have first place and second place for the uh, for the video making competition. I'll announce the winner for second and then go to first. So the winner of the second place in the video making competition, the award goes to. I'm just creating a bit of suspense. Okay, so I won't. Uh, I won't delay more. Okay, so the second place goes to Anapoya Medical College, second BASLP students, Mohammad Farzi, Mohammad Asif, Mohammad Yafes, Aisha Layan, Alia VH, and Fatima Tulisana. So second place goes to Anapoya Medical College students. So congratulations to all of you. And the first place for the video making competition goes to so the first place goes to Kasturba Medical College, Hrithik from fourth year BASLP and Allison from second MSC audiology. So first place goes to Kasturba Medical College. So congratulations for all the winners. And uh, thank you again for having me here. And uh, thank you for uh, listening to me and staying with me for uh, one hour even at uh, even in the evening. So thank you for all your kind attention and uh, for your, your kind words and very, very nice questions as well. Okay, so thank you everyone. Uh, and thank you uh, Department of Speech Language Pathology and Audiology from NFOA University for inviting me to be a part of this uh, program. Thank you everyone. Have a good day. Good night, I sorry. <laughs> thank you so much, sir. Congratulations to all the winners. Link for the videos are posted in the chat box and the participants will be informed regarding the prizes. We have now come to the end of the session, and it is my pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks this evening. I thank the Chancellor, Pro-Chancellor, Registrar of Yanapoya Deemed to be University, and the Principal, Yanapoya Medical College Hospital, for their wholehearted support in organizing this pro program. My sincere gratitude to Dr. Prashant Prabhu for taking time out of his schedule and delivering a guest lecture today. Thank you so much, sir. I also thank Ms. Shweta Prabhu for her support and guidance in organizing this event. I extend my gratitude to Mr. Shrikant for organizing this event and to all my fellow colleagues for their support in carrying out this program. Lastly, I thank all the participants for uh, being a part of this session and for their patient listening. Uh, participants may now leave the meeting. Kindly fill the feedback form.
and you may leave the meeting. Thank you so much, sir. Have a lovely evening. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so sir. much. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Take care.